G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech, and uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on, the Wajik people of the Noongar Nation. Now, this video is one that's been requested by several people who have commented when I uh, review Mokto boots. They asked me, which ones are your favorites? Uh, which, how do they compare? So let's take a look at that. So this video has been requested by quite a lot of people. Every time I uh, review my mock toe boots, and if you go to my channel, there's, there's too many boots for me to put a link um, up at the top as I usually do. But if you go to my channel and you scroll through it or search for these boots, you'll find that I've actually reviewed them, except for these two. Uh, and whenever I review mock toe boots, people ask me, uh, which one's your favorite? That's a really difficult question because it's like, which one's your favorite child? And even if you have one, you never say it, right? <laughs> um, it, they also ask, how do you compare them? You know, what's the fit like and so on? So I thought I might uh, go through them. But um, the concept is that I'm going to talk about my high-sided Mokto boots. Uh, there is a particular style, I think, as typified by the Thorogood and certainly the Red Wing 875 where um, it's a mock toe and it's high sided to give you some room for, for working. So although technically uh, Alden Indies are mock toes, I'm not going to include them in here because um, they don't quite conform to that, um, that look of that high side um, uh, sharp mock toe uh, look. Uh, and uh, Parkhurst has also brought out the Niagara, which is uh, a, a, in a similar design to the Alden. So it's quite sleek with a mock toe, but it's, it's not a high-sided uh, mock toe boot. So what is a mock toe boot anyway? Okay, mock toe is short for moccasin toe. Uh, they really include boots that are designed in such a way that look like original First Nations Americans moccasin shoes where the leather piece that goes around the side actually wraps around the bottom and forms part of the sole and then a vamp piece is sewn on uh, as evidenced by the stitching and then it's stitched okay so a mock toe boot mimics that design it's not mock as an m-o-c-k it's mock as an m-o-c short for moccasin uh, so they're all typified by having this this stitching across the top of the vamp uh, between the apron piece and the actual side of the boot. Commonly, uh, they are wedge sold. I have no idea why, but that's obviously the initial design from Thorogood that became uh, Americans, uh, America's Boy Scout boot in the 1930s, I think it was, 40s, uh, and typified by the Red Wing 875 and other Red Wing mock toe uh, wedge sole models. The kind of card outside the pack is the Grantstone brass boot where you can get a, a, a wedge sole but the one I've got in particular has a commando sole. And by the way lots of people do convert their Red Wing 875s and other uh, Red Wing wedge sole mock toes into commando soles. Uh, Let's take a look at the differences in the design, the materials, the price, and in comfort. And I'll take each of those categories uh, in turn. Um, so if we take a look at the ones in my collection, um, I'll start off from my right. I have these Red Wing 875s in Oro Legacy leather. Then I've got the Grantstone uh, brass boot in uh, what's called uh, Earth, which is a, uh, a waxy commander wax suede. I've just re-waxed it recently. Um, this one is an interesting one, and I'll talk about that. This is Thursday's Diplomat in the rugged and resilient uh, matte black. This is, uh, if you know your boots, you recognize this, the Thorogood Classic 6-inch mock toe work boot. And then this is new to my collection. This is also from Grant Stone. Uh, their field boot, which is, I think, a kind of like a, a, 
uh, East Coast America hunting boot, but it has that mock toe design and it's got high sides, so I'm including in this video, so sue me. Um, let's take a look at the comparative design. I think if you look at these, the most uh, similar is the Red Wing 875 and the Thoroughgood 6 inch classic mock toe. You can see, and I'm just going to put one down, you can see that the way they're both designed, here I'll put this in here, you can see the way that they're both designed is that um, they're 6 inch, they have a wedge sole, they have a high sided uh, side of the uh, 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 toe box area, they have the apron that comes on flat and they're stitching. Now I think the Thoroughgood is not a real mock toe, in other words that's one piece of leather but they've crimped it and stitched it, whereas um, the Red Wing 875 is I believe two pieces of leather being this piece here and the piece that goes around, so that's a real mock toe. Now there are others who kind of mimic that look, so let's take a look at the um, Thursday Diplomat. You can see the genesis of it, can't you? It's quite similar, except what's happened, of course, is it's been sleeked down to be a little bit more dressy. And definitely, same size, uh, the Diplomat has a little less room in the toe box. You can easily wriggle your toes in both uh, these two um, mock toes. This feels more like a, a standard boot. Uh, extremely comfortable though. And then of course you have the variants. The uh, uh, Grant Stone has the vamp piece, this uh, little apron piece, a little bit more inboard with the stitching around the toe there. So you can see how, what I mean by, you know, there's, it, it goes in a little bit more inboard. And as a result, it creates this rounded toe effect as opposed to this almost right angle toe effect there. So there's a design difference other than in fact the outsole. Uh, as for the feel boot, as I said, I, I think this is designed like the, uh, the, the, the state of Maine uh, uh, type of hunting boots because it's got this extra protective um, bump piece of leather across the toe. But similar in design, there's the apron piece, there's the sides, high-sided. Uh, talking about comparative materials and construction, um, let's see, they are all Goodyear welted. Um, and if you're not sure what Goodyear welted is, that's this piece of leather that you see on the outside. In all of them, they're 360 degrees, which means they go all the way around the outside of the boot. Uh, the uppers are stitched to the inside uh, through the uh, insole and the outsole is stitched on this outside stitch here through the outsole. You don't see the stitching in wedge sole boots, just have to check because <laughs> some, some do, um, because the wedge sole is glued on to a midsole that's had the Goodyear welt stitch gone through. The Thursday Diplomat is a little misleading. It looks at first almost like a stitch down. And I'm not clear whether this is a stitch down or not, where instead of the uppers tucked in and sewn to the inside of the welt and then the welt sewn through the midsole, uh, this looks like the uppers have been splayed out and that splayed out bit stitched into a welt and that's um, a, a, a stitch down construction. I'd be surprised though because stitch down is uh, tricky and more expensive and for 199 that'd be a hell of a feat if they did that. In terms of uppers um, we have a, a range uh, starting with this one from uh, Charles F. Stead, it's the Waxy Commander which is a suede and ultimately I think it's probably not as durable as oiled leathers or chrome tanned and oiled and veg tanned leathers uh, because it is a suede, it is a split leather it is covered with a layer of wax to give it some protection and in fact as I said earlier I've, I've just re-waxed this uh, using uh, an otter wax bar uh, and a heat gun to sort of um, let it soak in. Uh, leading on to 
a chrome tanned leather from Thursday from uh, La Farc Tannery, I believe, in Mexico. Uh, it, this is, uh, they're rugged and resilient, so it's meant to be, a, I think, a kind of um, corrected uh, grain leather or possibly a new buck that's been oiled over uh, to give it some protection. And then you've got the, uh, the famous Oral Legacy leather from Red Wing. It's oil. In fact, it feels oily now, even, even so. I have conditioned this maybe about a month ago. Um, but it, it's, it feels reasonably oily and therefore quite protective. It's a supple leather, although it's, it's firm. Um, going across to the Thoroughgood, this is tumbled oil leather. They tumble it to, to really soften it. And the difference between these two is, is actually remarkable. Um, it's soft enough to feel like you might not get the protection, but I think you do. These are clearly work boots um, and come from the genesis of work boots. And then you have Italian veg tanned leather uh, from Badalassi Carlo in Italy. And this is their uh, Minerva in a color called Saddle Tan. So in terms of uppers, a wide variation. In terms of outsoles, you have a Grant Stone uh, uh, rubber outsole, wedge sole, um, proprietary two grant stone that's slightly softer than the Vibram Christie sole that you get on the uh, Red Wing model. This is quite firm. Uh, about the same density as this Vibram one uh, on the Thursday and also about the same density as the uh, Thoroughgood proprietary uh, wedge sole. In the brass boot Grant Stone uses their proprietary commando sole, which is a, a firm, durable outsole. Uh, in terms of stitching, they're all double and triple stitched where it counts. Um, this one's gone crazy with stitches across there, as is the Thoroughgood with that. Um, I think that's actually a fake stitch. I don't think it does anything. I think it's a cosmetic stitch. So in terms of stitching, they're all reasonably um, uh, uh, tightly done. Uh, you expect for $199, this may have cut corners, but honestly, you can't see it. Um, so, well done, Thursday Boots. Um, now, let's move on to uh, the comparative price. Now, I need to check my notes. So, the Red Wing 875, uh, in Australian outlets, they sell for $575 in stores. There are actually a, a couple of stores in Australia, one in Perth, one in Melbourne, and I think one in Sydney that sell Red Wing boots, and they sell for $575. Uh, in, in American websites, they sell for around just over $300, $310, something like that. Uh, the Thoroughgood, um, they sell for US $250. I can't find a store in Australia that sells them, but uh, at US $250, that converts to Australian $385 plus postage, and at the moment, post-COVID, postage could be anywhere up to about 70 US dollars. So that, instead of being a low range boot, this starts to make it quite an expensive boot in, in Australia. I have seen, there is actually a Thoroughgood Australia website and I've seen them selling for around $320 and sometimes on sale around $200. So if you go to Thoroughgood Australia, just go and Google them and I might put a link in the, in the description below, you might find a few uh, bargains. Then, um, what have I got? Uh, the Grant Stone Brass Boot, US $380, uh, converts to uh, Australian $585, uh, then you add postage. Um, and similarly with the Field Boot, again US $380, converts to um, Australian $580, $590. Um, and this is the, the outlier, the uh, Thursday Diplomat at US $199 and converts to about 300 Aussie dollars plus postage. So they all fit within that 200 to 350, 400 range. And depending on make and I suppose comparative quality, um, the values of each are really not that different in terms of the value formula. Um, let's now take a look at comparative comfort. The most comfortable out of these, I think is the Thursday Diplomat. And that's probably not a surprise to you if you know that um, Thursday uses EVA foam uh, and pour on inside uh, the boot. 
which means that when you take it out of the box and you slip your, your, your feet in, it's like slipping into a pair of sneakers because EVA and Poron are used in sneakers. Um, the last is reasonably sleek, which means if you're wide footed, you could have a few problems in terms of the ball of the feet. I don't uh, uh, have that problem. This fits me quite well, but it is snug. Then um, I think probably the next most comfortable is the Thorogood. Uh, a large part of that is because of the, um, the insole that they provide you with, which is a nice foam insole, insole and it, it sort of protects you a lot in, in foot strike. And shock absorption. The, uh, the uh, tumbled oil leather is also extremely soft so it's really very comfortable. The height of the toe box allows you to wiggle your toes so that gives you some comfort. Then uh, the next line in terms of comfort, uh, I think the two uh, Grant Stone boots are very similar. I'll just pick up one. Uh, the last, the last used in the two are exactly the same. It's their Floyd last, which is uh, built to provide quite a wide and high toe box to give you comfort in that area when you're walking or hiking or working in these boots. The heel is uh, snug, so it keeps your heel in place, and then it gradually widens out to the sides. The Inside of the boot is leather, so it's a leather insole and leather sock liner, and then you have the leather midsole, you have cork filling, and depending on whether you have the wedge sole or the uh, commando sole, you also have that to help you with foot strike. The, um, the shank in both are steel, triple ribbed steel, so they give you um, really good arch support. And then I think <laughs> the, um, the least comfortable uh, at least until you've completely broken them in, and I'm not even sure I've completely broken these in, is the Red Wing. Uh, the Red Wing mock toe is famously difficult to break in. <laughs> um, I, I didn't find as many problems as others have reported, but these are not easy to break in, and they're very firm under put, underfoot. I've actually had to put a little foam uh, insole just to, just to help the, the ball of my feet not hurt so much when I'm walking. So that's the comfort. Um, so in summary, that's how I would compare my high-toed, uh, high-toe box uh, mock-toe boots. Do I have a favourite? I think my favourite in looks and aesthetics has got to be the Red Wing 875. I mean, that is a classic. Do I have a favourite? I think the favourite in terms of arch support, comfort, it would have to be the Thursday Diplomat. They've built up that arch somehow with a little bit of, um, I don't know what, maybe a bit of leather that gives you a little bit more arch support. Do I have a favourite? I think in terms of going out walking, I, I love these Grant Stone brass boots, particularly with the Commando sole. They're great for gripping and I think you can just check out my video where I've gone on hikes in these. So do I have a favourite? <laughs> Not going to tell you. <laughs> So I hope you like this little comparison. Uh, go to my uh, channel and check out the, the reviews I've done on these boots. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to click on like and don't forget to click on subscribe. I've got plenty more videos to bring to you. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care and I'll see you soon. Ta-da, 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 okay.